<laughs> Jack's up. <laughs> does auto damage pop minions? Yes. Auto damage does pop minions, yeah. Okay. A fireball to the one that is immediately in front of Chunk. I think that's number... Is it number one or two? We will have a penalty attack. I don't know. Why? Please he's prone. Range tax. Range tax. Okay. 29 versus reflex minus the penalty. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. He takes 21. Does that include is vulnerable? vulnerable? He is vulnerable. Is that including the vulnerable? No. That is not including the vulnerable because he is not vulnerable from my vulnerable. Right. He is vulnerable. So how much damage is all? 21? 21 plus whatever. Okay. So 26. Gone. And uh, then you choose not my conscious? Yeah. Pop the minion unconscious. Unconscious. Okay. Un minion. Yeah, so you guys normal. have an unconscious save ends guy. And a guy with like 20 24 hit points left. Who's dazed and about to be scored. So <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and say the combat is, is over. Woo! Um you guys go ahead and Finish cleaning up all of the remaining creatures in the encounter. Okay, um, that one is dead. Is that so one over? You finish that one? guy off. Yeah. If, if if Toy's one taking care of this one, it's also. Toy dead. would be the next one to get a legit opportunity. Bye yeah. bye. Okay, the two of them are killed. Three. There were a total of three that were. Toy gives no fucks. We made three bodies. Three. Yes, you're correct. Total of three that died. Toy killed two, and he be requested one death. Mm -hmm. So, so okay. we go back to the first one. We so. give Hiwi a chance to, to fix him, and if that doesn't work, then we mess with the bodies. Well, Hiwi. Uh, we'll already have a fire. Hiwi is going through and, and checking to see if and, you know, a fire any of them are actually salvageable, and that's several of them look uh, look to have been uh, the the three not the trap runners, the frost scales, um, look to have been injured before the battle started. Mm. Um, one of the frost scales, the one that was very messed up, mm -hmm. um, had an obvious cut in the middle of his chest, mm -hmm. um, that went almost the entire span of his chest. That was somehow bear related. Yes, it is reasonable to assume that it is somehow <laughs> bear related. Um, you're not sure if you can just, or sorry, I should say, you know that you will not be able to remove the condition under normal circumstances. Like, you're not just going to be able to use normal magic to get them better. Um, we, we could do a retro. But the, the, the thing that's afflicting them um, could possibly be removed by something else. You have not seen someone get better. All of these people are too far <coughs> gone that you would normally expect them to get better. Um, they are all in varying stages of, basically, death for having this, uh, the Bogars touched on them. In that case, should we go ahead and put them out? Um. <laughs> He's just we're, looking right. at all these no, little... Yeah, as I say, we're, we're just kind of looking at, um... Just, just say the word. We can put them out of their misery. If you'd rather not watch, we understand. It's possible that defeating the Bogarsh could save them, but I don't know that for sure. Because he's never been defeated. Exactly. Well, well, and we don't know if the sickness on them is an extension of him or if it's something that that is on sort them. of separate. Or right. Or and I can't ask Chile who would have the answer to that. Mm -hmm. I want to talk to Mariko. It's an option. But she didn't know. Well, we can. It's, it's, we could ask. Do you feel like it's worth it? If you, if you do summon Mariko, it will be a use of the daily item power. Mm -hmm. Which I'm not saying it's your. For people listening to podcasts, I'm not actually enforcing the daily item power rule, but it is a daily power, so you won't be able to resummon Mariko at any point. What is it? The, the official rule is you only get one daily. They've. They've changed they that. They changed so, that, okay. It used to be you, you would get one daily item used per tier, and they got rid of that. Right, okay, so you could just use... Make as many as you want, but you can't use the same one more than once. Right. Well, right, it's right. Right. Yeah, I guess we can see if Mark would have anything. Okay. Um, 
in New York, in the, uh, in the interest of expediency. There we go. Wait, I was trying to think efforts, and I was there's not. In the interest of expediency, um, Marco, no idea. She's this. This is all stuff that's past her time. And has no useful suggestion. sound a crocodile makes when it roars. Uh-huh. I can't imitate it here with my voice, but that sound... It's kind of like a horse thrilling. Yeah. It, it is very loud, and it almost like vibrates you slightly. Um, you hear, um, coming from that, that divot that's over by the river, mm-hmm. um, the sound of something moving, and you see uh, a head poke up out of the, 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 um, the mound. How big um, of a head are we talking? Very large. Um, it is the head of a crocodile that is significantly, basically the, the ones in the river that you have poked amulet or would be babies compared to this creature. Um, Giant croc? What? So what you're saying is like a sci-fi network special croc. Yes. <laughs> um, Mega croc. <laughs> you can see a, as it kind of sticks its face out, the, the scales are light blue. Um, or sorry, the scales are dark blue, and there is a light blue mist forming around the side of the creature as it sort of sticks its head up and looks out, and it kind Can of just... looks over towards your area. Uh, deep the breath for round two. The creature looks very, very wounded. Um, deep as it looks over towards you, you see it's got cuts along along the top of its its face. I'm getting some Mononoke Hime flashbacks. Yeah. Do you want to, do you want to try? Uh... Do you want to try talking to it? I don't know if we, if I've got time to cast to be able to do so. How long does it take? Uh, it's ten minutes. Mm. Yeah, it's ten minutes. Definitely not enough time to. Kiwi is going to attempt an insight to see if she understands that a standard crocodile, this would be damn suicidal, but she wants to see, since this does not look like a standard crocodile, if she would be able to approach it. Insight. Um, I am I'm ready in action. Cannot ready action outside of combat. I am ready in action, which would take us into combat. Okay, you cannot ready in action outside of combat. Okay, I am initiating combat and ready in an action. Okay. Twenty eight. <laughs> when you enter combat, you are more than welcome to do so and try to make these a prize round. However, rules of the game prevent you from ready in actions outside of combat. Twenty eight insight to see, because she's gonna slowly start moving in its direction. If she feels it's Did we going. Get a short rest? Because mm-hmm. we were finding bodies. Body. Fuck. Okay. That was my question. Um, I assume not. I mean, she's moving very, very what's, slowly. What's the uh, well, one um, You can see that as the creature that. slowly mm-hmm. starts to, to move itself out of the, the burrow, mm-hmm. um, mm-hmm. it has the, the, the little marks of, of blue on it. You can see it's got scour marks all down its side. And you can see there are two plates of frost over each of its eyes, or a plate of frost over each of its eyes. Mm-hmm. It doesn't 
do not believe that it could be able to see through those. You can see there's patches of frost covering the entire crocodile. Um, it has several decent gash marks in it, and along the top of its snout, you see what looks to be a big bite mark. And you rot. That's also what she's trying to do. Yes. You see significant signs of the, the black rot that is on these creatures. All right, let's go. Dustin. This is killing Huey. She's just like. If we can get a religion check from someone in the group. Bingo! That would be a 20. Okay. Uh, can you re-roll that? Um, we could, but... It's probably not. Actually, hold on one second. I may be able to re-roll it. Should I? Arcana, nature, history. Alright, so... Um, excuse me. Uh, you you can know even with the, the 20, which I'm pretty yeah. sure is... It's an easy one. Yes, it's medium easy. Okay. Um, 20 will make medium. Um, you know that a lot of tribal areas, and you would know this kind of almost automatically, they revere animals that are abnormal in any way. Mm -hmm. um, this was probably a godlike figure. Ice crocs, ice lizards with the powers, I mean, the it's, perils are there. Yeah, it's fairly easy to, to make the connection. So this creature is probably some, sort of, yeah, some sort of sacred beast for them. I am so very, very, very disappointed that we don't have the card where we would have an offspring. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. very... We never did play that card. We went back in the, it is in the it deck. It is in the deck. We don't have currently have. I am looking forward to seeing it again. Say something funny, you son of a bitch. I am <laughs> unattempted to burn this just to get a chance to find it. Kiwi, Kiwi is going to very yeah, slowly yeah, continue to approach it. Um, she's she knows she she's not going to be able to probably heal it, but it may be. In her mind, it may be supernatural or odd enough that there may be a chance that it's not as far gone, and it might be more intelligent. Um, jump so, or follow. Hammer is held and hung. All right, so slowly. I'm ready to sling spells. I'm walking. Yeah, yeah. Huey is Feature very, very slowly. Feature kind of stops as soon you can tell that it's sensing you. Mm -hmm. Breathes in very deeply. And you feel the air around you guys slowly get a little bit colder, and it kind of turns its head to the side, and you see it shaking its head and puts its face down, grinds it against one of the remnants of kind of one of the huts. You see it break off little pieces of ice that are covering up its eyes, and the eye kind of turns towards you and look, and you see floating through the, the white of the eye, the little black marks of, cor of the corruption. Oh, shit. Is there anything you can do for it? Can we try? Yeah, it is a straight Princess Monomoka. Um, I was say, uh, dude, I, we could try setting up the ritual if it'll sit there for... Um, it does not seem to be moving. It seems to be just looking at you. Okay. Um, it's about do, 20 yards away. Do, do we want to try to remove Affliction? Yes. Here we will. How long does it take? Oh, uh, let's see. Um, I will let you know that... Um, actually, give me a... I, I won't even make a good heal check. You'd be able to know he is definitely bloodied. You may want to heal him before we do remove affliction. Well, it sure. takes a it takes an hour for the flourish. Okay. But well, we I mean, can heal if it beforehand. he, huh? We can right. heal it beforehand. Yeah. I mean, if it lets us get close enough. If if the right. shadow lets. Kiwi will. What's the range? I think, I actually, I think my there's no range, range. listed. Let me see. I just want to see how it's worded. Um, go ahead. Kiwi will continue to approach so that she is close enough to actually do a heal on it. Which you said it was 20 feet, so she got... Yes, she's trying to really stuff. Okay. Closer. Um. Actually, before she heals it, just because she's run into this, is actual... Is she going to be able to heal the wounds that are infected at all to try to help this? Yeah. The, the, the infection is not magical in nature. Like, okay. It's not going to prevent the creature from... And the wounds are going better. Physically. It's not what affected okay. the injury. Yeah, it's not... Okay. It's not well, uh, I'm just wondering possible. if, because it could be that even if I tried to heal it, it just might not heal. So, she is going to uh, do a healing spirit okay. to kind of close the wounds, and uh, it'll basically healing surge. Give me a um, uh, willpower check. 
Oh, the low power skill? Low power skill. I can't wait to train that skill. 19. 19. Um, as you kind of push your healing spirit into it, you feel like the creature is is almost given up. Basically, uh, creatures don't have healing surges yet. Yeah. <clears throat> creatures actually have one healing surge per tier, but um, like this creature doesn't have anything. Like It's exhausted. Um, so when you push your energy into it, it's not really healing it very much, but it's trying. Right. Yeah. You um, need to do... When do you, you have a straight heal? Can we use when you, one of ours? Hang on. When, you, when your spirit touches it, because that's mm -hmm. how you go and you re restore the spirit and then restore the body through it, you can feel that the spirit is completely riddled with this corruption. It is all over. Um, and after healing it with the spirit, you can tell that its mind is severely affected. Um, so it is not itself. Yeah. She is, she is hoping that it can continue to fight long enough to at least get that, and then she'll try to do whatever else she can. But for right this moment, um, then since it doesn't have... We use Comrade Zucker? No. We would have to accept it as part of the party, and then... I feel like it might take objection to that. Yeah. I, I would not. Personally, I would not have a problem with you using Comrade Zucker, but it would have to be... It would have to... Cons you could consider she it your ally. It would have to consider you... Yeah. 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 She is going to use the daily power on her gloves of healing, which is, I spend a healing surge, and I am going to consider it an ally, an adjacent ally, so she is going to move next to it. Okay. She understands that it's mine, this is not necessarily, but this is what he we would do. <laughs> uh, as you go to, to, to approach it, um, when you're about half the distance between you and it, you see its mouth crack open slightly and lose out a little bit of that frost as it goes and touches. And you can see that it's killing the ground underneath it, and it turns its head towards you, and you've seen the posture that it's getting into before. It's basically curling its body. So and if you get any closer, it's going to snap. Can we chuck healing potions at it? How are healing potions on healing potions? And healing potions force you to spend a healing search. Right. The whole point is. Okay, so the yeah, bomb forces you. What if we? What if we uh, jog its memory, and then lash it down, and then fix okay. it? Okay. So the next thing. Daily power. Regains hit points as if it's been a healing surge. I can be ten squares away. <laughs> <laughs> so you can be ten. You can be fifty feet yeah. away. All right. You'll you'll get to about the the point where it's starting to just curl up. Just curl up. Um, it spins the point. You can see wounds in the body start to close. You see the the glaze kind of look on its eyes sort of fade slightly. Um, it's still bloody, um, but it's doing significantly better. Um, you can see it's looking a little bit more active, a little bit more mobile. And the <laughs> and he's like, great, now it will be. So <laughs> it does look like it's like the posture that's getting into. It's starting to lift itself up off the ground, like it's going to start lumbering your way. Why well, I appreciate that Woodwind is willing to fix me, <laughs> despite the fact that I ain't exactly a good person. Sometimes the fact that Woodwind is willing to fix anybody. <laughs> it's occasionally problematic. Well, in this case, I agree with that. <laughs> uh, Chunkus is basically like one step behind. If we get like ready to pull her out, if, if we get it, as you guys are first thing I'm doing in the veil is that healing is starting, starting to soak into the creature. Mm -hmm. He digs his face into the ground slightly, opens up his mouth, and you see inside of his mouth are just one, not only rows of teeth, but you see just an incredible wave of frost come out from his mouth and start to spread all the area around him like a low fog bank um, as it's spreading out in every direction. Yeah, it's probably not how big, how close do we have to be to do There's room? no range, I could do it from all the way back here. here. Yeah. I think whatever's reasonable to Gary. It's un if it's unwilling, you have to do restraint. It's on the second part of that. It's on the right hand side. Yeah, because it can kill it. Well, I can't cast sleep. Because, uh, but I can cast, uh, what's we call it, which will mobilize it. Yeah, right, but that's long. not going to mobilize it for nearly long enough. No, but we could immobilize it and then tie it down. You already told us that you were. Yeah. 
I would not have a problem with that. You want to try to force it to tie it down, but this creature is quite large. Yeah, I don't think we have enough rope. You, uh, you guys all have rope. I don't think that the amount of rope is going to be the problem. It's the strength of the rope. Strength. Strength of the rope and also what exactly are you tying it to? Tying it to. Yeah. Now, you might you might be able to lash his <laughs> mouth shut. Uh, let's see. That's because that's, that's, the muscles that it opens his mouth with. That's strong. three things that I can immobilize it at least until end of turn. Um, two of them are sa immobilized saves end. <clears throat> I, I will let you know that if you're using your stuff in combat, you're not going to be able to cast your ritual, and your ritual is going to take an hour, which is going to be much longer than you guys can immobilize it by normal means. Yeah. I'm saying immobilize, tie down, go to sleep. Yeah, we're saying ritual. I don't think we can tie it down. Okay. So, so well, I'm gonna. I'm can gonna you make back a, Hold on, hold on. Can you make a nature check to change the disposition of the um, animal? It's not an animal. Like, I guess we could try. I can try. Would the problem that is, it's probably friendly. You can try to calm the creature. I believe that's a nature um, skill. That's nature. I can try helping. Uh, nature, like, calm you, animal. You you know enough about how much the creature's afflicted that it's not in its own mind enough to be able to yeah, pay attention. That's he was like normally I would be if if it was in its own mind I could do that. Basically, it's a like a it's like the effect of an insanity. And insanity insanity kind of functions a little bit similar to dominate. So it's like it's under the influence of some mind controlling effect. So a lot of the normal things that are affected normally. Just no. Well, no. do we want to? What do we want to do, guys? Um, he's opening his mouth and he's spewing fog in every direction. And this fog looks pretty lethal. It does not look lethal. It's just cold. It's actually gotten to the point where it's going to be touching Kiwi pretty soon. Wood, wood, would you back up a bit? Um, you can see as the fog is spreading, as it touches the little pools that are spread all around the. Um, the, the village, the pools, little ice, looks almost like ice trees start growing up out of the pool and going and touching in every direction. They look like they're spreading. Because I'm good, good with ice, but you're made of wood. I'm, I'm saying that if Woodwind gets frozen, I don't have a good way to unfrozen her. Huey oh. begins to move back. <laughs> she's just, okay. the whole time she's just watching it. This has been a bad day for you. <laughs> this, has been, this has been a bad month and a half for you, really. <laughs> then there was a little kid, and then there were these two men, and then there was a crocodile, and I had to cut off. And it started with erasing Zenlin from existence. So, <laughs> so it's, it's we still do it. skating the ice towards you guys. Does it seem to be moving towards us or just spewing the ice? It's, well, it's I mean, not spreading the ice. The ice. Okay. You notice the way that it's kind of shifting its head side to side? It's constantly making the ice go further and further away from it. Um, you've seen other creatures do stuff like this before. Mm -hmm. um, Is it nesting? It's not that it's nesting, it's almost like it's using the fog to search. Search. It's like snakes that flick their head side to side to flick their tongue. Look at that. Touch the fog to see if it's, you know, how bad it is. Okay. Uh, going up and touching the fog, you, it is cold. It's not painfully cold, but it is very cold. As soon as you put your hand into that little fog bank, you see it snap his mouth shut and then immediately look exactly to where you're standing. And as he reopens his mouth, you see his whole body tense up. So it's getting ready to strike. Yes. He's about 20 yards away. So. Yeah. Kiwi will grab you and actually pull you back at this point. Well, yeah, she's tugging on its trunk to try to get it to come back. Well, I'm back, I'm back, but... Okay. How far back are you moving away? Uh, just slowly backing away as far as I go. I mean, until it does uh, something. Dude, but... okay. Back away and to the left. Or yeah, the away from the fog. Yeah. Whoa, no. Get out of don't the direct be, line of sight. Don't be in a line from where it's going right. to So... Um, yeah, Huey begins to kind of move away, like, like in an arc away from it. So are you trying to be, are you, are you moving away like you're moving away from a rabbit dog, just moving very slowly and getting away from it? Or, okay. Just, um, meant no harm. Do it be no cool. Way.
place your hands back here a little bit. Did you yeah. haven't spent any healing search yet, so still right. blank. So I have I haven't had time to? You can spend one for your second wind, but that'll be your encounter power use of second wind. You haven't had time to rest yet. Um, so as you're kind of slowly moving back from it. Does it track me? Yeah. Um, you see it shut its mouth, and then you see the fog coalesce in front of it, and then immediately solidify. It makes almost like a track of ice. And you see as it touches its head against the ground, it sort of teleports through the ice and appears directly in front of you. Uh, oh, that's not okay. Snapping right in front of, basically snapping the air right where you just backed out of. Hmm. And then it kind of turns its head, looks kind of where you are. And you can see now that you're this close to it, it's pretty much blind. Like, it's sustained severe damage to its its eye, and it looks like it's got stuff going through it that's preventing it from being able to see you. Um, so it snaps the air uh, where you were, and then takes its head, and then he takes his face back down on the ground, and it opens his mouth, and you see a low fog rolling out. I don't think we Maybe can, you we want can, to move we faster. But I don't want to... It can't see you. Is the fog spreading around behind it? Yes. That's part yes. of the way he's shaking his head side to side. He's kind of pushing it. Backwards. <laughs> I hate to do this, Huey. Do I have to revoke? We we can't help this thing in the condition that it is. And if, even if we could help it, it's not going to be sentient enough for like polite conversation. I don't think we can save it. And if we leave it, it will create chaos. We probably could, <laughs> we probably could save it, but we don't have the time, the effort, or the tools necessary to do so. Then leave it. She turns and walks off. I she heads you were in the worried. direction that Pavel would have gone, which is back to the shoreline. Remember, yeah. because you know, she goes straight. The back The original to the thing was you went to the village, to try to find. She a way will to go get around to find for a the boat. thing. It's it's that way. So. Okay. She just um, immediately works with walks through. There's away from the creature. Okay. I'm not attacking this without support of the heat. So, you guys avoid the creature? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, getting away from the creature, you can see it has a maximum range of somewhere about 50 yards. Um, so, I mean, it's, it's the aura of ice that it can create is very, very large, but it's not infinite. Um, and also, you can see the borders of it. Yeah, you can see basically how Which far it gets away before it starts to warm up and basically become useless. Uh, after a little while of you guys being outside of its range, it makes that, that low kind of whining roar and then goes and searches around in the, t in the village for a little bit. And then it looks like it's moving around in the village like it knows where everything is. Mm -hmm. um, it's not hitting any of the buildings, over. it's not knocking anything over. Um, and then it slowly lumbers back over towards what you can now pretty obviously tell this layer that's near the uh, the riverbed. Mm -hmm. Kiwi is going to begin trying to figure out a way to get across the river at this point. Okay. So, um, you guys are on the edge of the river. Um, mm -hmm. I will say, you guys did get a short rest, so go ahead and spin your stuff as if you had just had a short rest. Cool. Spin any number of healing search to get yourselves back to a reasonable amount of health. Um, 